for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, we'd like to start the Planning Commission meeting at 5.31 p.m. on May 13, 2024. All right, call to order and roll call. Here we go. Let's see, Commissioner Clement? Here. Commissioner Echegon? Here. Commissioner Franklin? Here. Commissioner Reed? Me. Mead, sorry. Here. <laughs> and I'm Commissioner Couch. I'm here. And it looks like Commissioner Brewer and Commissioner Kane are absent. Next order of business is our public comment number three. Public comment will be in accordance with the attached policy. This time is reserved for members of the audience to address the Planning Commission on items of interest that are not on the agenda and are within the subject matter jurisdiction of the Commission. It is recommended that speakers limit their comments to three minutes each and is requested that no comments be made during this period on items on the agenda. The commission is prohibited by law from taking any action on matters discussed that are not on the agenda prior to addressing the commission. Any handouts for commission will be provided to the commission secretary for distribution to the commission and appropriate staff. The public will have the opportunity to comment on items on the agenda once the item has been called and the chair opens, to, opens the item to the public. With that said, we'll open public comment at 5.33 p.m. And do we have anybody? No. Christy, emails or anything? No. All right. So there'll be no public comment. We'll go ahead and close at 5.34 p.m. Next, we'll move to item number four, approval of minutes. Um, commissioners, have you had a chance to look at the regular meeting that we had on April 8th, 2024? Any objections or concerns? No. If there's none, I'll move to accept the minutes as presented. Okay, we have a first to accept the minutes. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, we have a second. So go ahead and approve, adopt, adopt the minutes or approve of the minutes regular meeting April 8th, 2024. Um, Commissioner Franklin. Aye. Commissioner Mead. Aye. Commissioner Clement. Aye. Commissioner Echegon. Aye. And I'm Commissioner Couch. I vote aye as well. Adoption of the minutes. Okay, we'll move to item number five, report and recommendation. Recommendation. Consideration to approve and adopt resolution number 2024-0-02. A request by Jeff Roberts as agent to extend approval of tentative subdivision map track 932 and accompanying planning entitlements for one year. The project site is located on the east side of 18th Avenue and north of Glendale, APN 0210300057. Steve, take her away. Thank you, Steve Brandt, City Planner. Uh, this is the uh, Lacey Ranch subdivision that uh, you and the council approved about two years ago. Um, so we're coming up close to the uh, time for extension that they have not sub yet submitted the first uh, final map. So they're asking for a one-year extension of the tentative map. Uh, there's been a number of things that have been happening, though. Um, there's probably a lot of things that I'm not even aware of that he's been working on. But the but what I am aware of is on the planning side, we've we've gone in and pre-addressed all the lots, so we know what the addresses are going to be for all the lots once they start coming in. And um, on the uh, engineering side. Um, the applicant has been working with our public works department to uh, locate, uh, design, and install a sewer lift station. It's going to be located at uh, Liberty and the Glendale alignment, and then um, from there, it'll the sewer trunk line will head to the east to reach uh, Lacey Ranch, um, kind of along the Glendale alignment. So uh, some of those things just need to get done before. They can really start building homes. And so um, we have no problem recommending a uh, one-year time extension. This would be their first time extension. They're allowed up to five. Mm -hmm. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll go ahead and open up to public comment um, for the report and recommendation. Uh, Sir, go ahead. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. I'm Jeff Roberts. I work for the Asimi Group. And uh, as Steve Brandt has said, was here a couple of years ago when we were working on this project approval initially. Uh, we came to the commission. There was support for the project. We went to the to council and there was support for both the EIR certification and the project as presented. Um, we appreciate your consideration here tonight. We have been working diligently on this project and Steve touched upon the sewer issue. The sewer issue and the elevation of that sewer lift station is what drives the entire grading plan for the project. And we've been working with this, uh, your engineers and our engineers on fine tuning what that's gonna be. And I think we've got that pretty well worked out. In addition, as you may recall, this project was not in the sphere of influence when we started it. It is today. That sphere was approved by, by LAFCO and involved a lot of other properties. So it wasn't just Lacey Ranch. We've also gone through the annexation process and I'm happy to report the property is annexed into the city. We had to deal with the Williamson Act issue through that annexation and that's all dealt with too. So we've been doing a lot of work, but it, you can't see it on the site just yet. So we would appreciate your support for an extension. Be happy to answer questions. Do you have any sense or anticipation of the when the next step might take place? So the next step would be the submission of the final map, which is being worked on by Precision Civil Engineering in Fresno. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you, I've seen versions of it. This, this property, as you may recall, it's a big property. And this southerly 80 plus or minus acres will come in as a final map. Uh, it would be phase one of that final map. Uh, it's next to existing homes to the south. Uh, it's closer to infrastructure and there is a main east-west road that kind of bifurcates the north from the south. So that southerly portion is the part we're concentrating on now. And I can tell you it could be within a month or two that the map is in. Okay, thank you. Sure. No? Any other questions? No? All right, thank, thank you. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Okay, go ahead and like to close public comment at 5.38 p.m. And commissioners, time for discussion. Well, it's been quite a while coming, at least a couple of years, sounds like quite a while. Uh, maybe it really is not in, the, in a, a larger scope of things, but I think there's a lot of anticipation in the, in the city for the beginning of that thing, uh, for housing that's needed. And uh, so we're glad to hear it's coming along. Thank you. Thank you. I'll yes. make, a, I'll oh, make a motion. Yeah, I, th I think I don't have no questions about it. I'll make a motion to adopt resolution number 2024 tag 02, approving the one year extension of time for a tentative subdivision map track 932 and accompanying planning entitlements to May 17, 2025, in accordance with the findings and conditions in the resolution. Great. We have a first. Do we have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a first and a second. Let's go ahead and do a vote. <coughs> Commissioner Clement. Aye. Commissioner Mead. Aye. Commissioner Echegon. Aye. Commissioner Franklin. Aye. And Commissioner Couch. I vote yet. Yeah, aye as well. All right. It has passed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, we're going to move on to item number six of public hearing report and recommendation. This is to accept public comment and consideration. Oops. Sorry, no, I need to read. I should have it on a separate paper. I am so, no, I, <laughs> I, I didn't learn my lesson from last month. To accept public comment and consideration and recommend to the city council adopt a resolution number 2024-03 and approve zoning tax amendment number 2024-01. I talked to Steve and we'll go ahead and just do the whole discussion at one time here. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Kira. I'm with QK. The zoning text amendment that you have the uh, before you this evening addresses a number of topics. They were 
mostly in response to issues that staff has noticed, um, things that the public has br brought to our attention at the counter or things that code enforcement have noticed. And so we actually held three individual um, workshops with the city council and brought a few of these issues uh, forward and asked them what they felt about it. And based on the um, feedback that we received, we have brought forward some text amendments for your consideration. The first one is addressing the front yard fences for single family homes. At the counter, a lot of homeowners are requesting to put up four foot tall fences. And at this time, the requirement is for a maximum of three and a half feet. The fences are required to be at least 50% permeable, which you can see some examples of those here, which means that you can see through it at least half of the uh, surface area. So if there are any concerns, um, oh, I'm sorry, we're going to wait till the end for that. So, <laughs> um, so these are just some examples of what those front yard fences look like and um, what you might expect to see if you do approve the text amendment as proposed. And here you can see the chart in the text uh, as it is now and how it would be amended. Another issue that staff noticed is that um, a lot of homeowners are pouring second driveways. And currently the code only allows homeowners to complete a driveway all the way to their property line that they are closest to. So if their driveway is on the west side of the property, they can go you know, to the west property line, for instance. Um, but because a permit is not required for flat work, a lot of these driveways were getting poured before staff or you know, anyone in the city, um, city staff noticed. And one of the biggest problems that we're having with these driveways is the parking of semi-permanent mobile food trucks, which everyone knows as food trucks. And so with these proposed text amendments, we have made an allowance for a second driveway. And the condition is that there has to be enough room for that driveway to provide access to a side yard. So if the side yard is wide enough to accommodate a vehicle or a um, uh, like a trailer or, you know, the such, then that is fine. But there is a requirement that no parking be allowed on that second driveway. So it can be used to access the backyard, side yard, and that's where they could park a boat, a trailer, a, a car. But the second driveway wouldn't be available for them to park on, on any sort of semi-permanent or permanent basis. So if if um, if they're allowed to put the second driveway, will they have to have an approach? An apron, yeah. Instead of the sure. curb. That's an issue we're seeing where curbs are cracking from the constant driving over. Yeah, city or council. Or people are putting lumber in the gutters, and then that's mm -hmm. causing issues also. Which, which doesn't even look good. No. Not to mention, yeah, blocking yeah. water flow. Has that been addressed or talked City about? City Council didn't have any issues with that. They thought that an approach would be fine. As far as our text amendments to the zoning code, there wouldn't be anything in there addressing a second approach. So, yeah, so they would just be applying for an encroachment permit with the engineering department. So they can, they can do the flat work without a permit, but they're not required to do an apron approach. Is that correct? I don't think the text as it is written specifically requires it. No. Okay. We can amend that though. If we can, oh, sorry. We can talk about a discussion. That's okay. fine. Sorry. Keep going. I'll, I'll make a I note apologize. of that. Okay. Yes. So the third topic we have is in regards to heritage trees. There was the city of Lemoore's existing ordinance protected 
We have one, six, six separate species of trees. And that was unique to Lemoore. So we did a significant, significant amount of research to look at other cities in across the state. And the only thing that we could find would be a protection for oak trees. And in this case, uh, specifically the valley oak. And this, again, is, is addressing issues that the public has brought forward, uh, having to get a permit to cut down something such as an ash tree or a pine tree. And uh, staff recognizes that those trees don't generally require the same protections that are needed, and they also aren't required by law. So if the Planning Commission is amenable, the staff has recommended that only the Valley Oak remain protected. And then um, any, I think it's specific, specific, if a tree was specifically required as a street tree, then it would need to remain. But otherwise, it would just be any, only Valley Oaks would be protected. Our next topic is in regards to tattoo parlors. They are currently prohibited in the downtown DMX one zone and require a CUP in the DMX two zone, neighborhood commercial and regional commercial zones. The proposed changes would allow tattoo parlors as a permitted by right use in all of those zones, as well as mixed use and professional office. And this is in response to a general um, acceptance of tattoo parlors and the city recognizing that it was a little bit onerous for to require those businesses to require CUPs or even to exclude them from the downtown DMX one zone. We did write special use standards that limit operating hours, prohibit the service of alcohol and marijuana based substances. There are separation requirements in the down, uh, outside of the downtown zones, and it does require compliance with all state, county, and city health and human service regulations. So that's implemented to make sure that we have protections in place. So if we are going to make it a by right use, we do have these special standards within the text of the zoning ordinance that requires compliance um, without having to bring them forward for discretionary permit. The same idea is proposed for mini storages. There are They are currently only allowed in industrial zones, but a number of cities are starting to allow them in more zones, especially residential zones. So in this case, the proposed allowance uh, allowed zones would be the low density, low medium density, and medium density residential zones. And it does require a conditional use permit. So these proposals would be brought forward to the Planning Commission for approval. Again, we did put in special use standards and design standards. If there's any specific um, concerns that you might have, I can go into depth later about all of these different uh, special use store standards, but they are basically just ensuring that the projects are um, sorry, blinking. Um, are going to fit in well with the businesses and the homes around them. And they do require that the sites be fully paved, they be fully enclosed. And within the residential zones, they have design standards that are that are already applied to all walls in the residential zone and all buildings, uh, building walls in the residential zone. So we just reference those uh, so that they would be built to the same quality of uh, that you would expect in the residential zone. And business hours are also limited to make sure that there are no impacts on neighboring residences. I'm gonna hand this over to Steve. Thanks, Gary. I'm going to do that. I'm going to talk about the signs. So we um, looked at first. We looked at uh, the permanent uh, monument signs. Uh, right now, 
the these these are the signs that that'll be out in the front of a business. Most they're for commercial businesses. Right now, they're limited to four feet high. Um, you can see the example there with the Burger King sign. Um, most cities allow the monument signs to be higher than that. And so we went back and looked at um, kind of what other some other cities are doing. And you know, not every zone is the same is this is the same height. So what we're proposing is to go to six feet for non-residential uses in the the zones that aren't really commercial zones. Um, and then uh, up to 12 feet in neighborhood commercial and the industrial zones and then 16 feet in the regional commercial zone. And then the downtown would stay four feet. You usually don't see monument signs in the downtown anyway. So um, we keep that where it is. So this is, um, you know, just another way of being business friendly, promoting um, the businesses that are here. Could you give an example of a 12 foot sign in uh, some of those areas? Because I don't remember, I can't think of anything right now that's 12 foot tall. tall. Probably because we don't oh, allow them. That's weird, that's it. Um, a lot of the signs, like if you're if you're in Visalia on Mooney Boulevard, the newer signs, the ones that have been built in the last 20 years, those are in the 10 to 12 foot range. We, we don't have anything like that anymore, right? Do we? No. Probably not. No. What? Oh, okay. Best, like the best Western. That one's probably about okay. that high. Yeah. Okay. Okay, then uh, the next topic would be highway oriented signs. So these are signs that are specifically meant to be along the highway, uh, draw people off um, and advertise along the highway. So um, right now we do allow highway oriented signs, but it's pretty limited. And so the height, there's a height limitation you have to cluster different businesses together onto one sign uh, unless you're a site that's over 50 acres and you're probably not going to be a site over 50 acres unless you're a Walmart or a Costco. So, so that pretty much limits it to, you know, combining signs. Um, there's been an interest in have, letting people, you know, have their own sign, um, not require this and then allowing some bigger signs. So we looked at what, um, what the codes say in some of the cities along like Highway 99, like Tulare, Fresno, Merced, and looking at, at what they allow. And so what we came up with is to say that you can have, you can have an individual sign. If you're an individual business, and again, these are businesses that are only within, um, It'll be within 500 feet of the of either Highway 41 or Highway 198, and it needs to be a commercial or a um, industrial zone that you're in, or and an, and it needs to be a commercial business or industrial business. So, um, we we raised the height, um, and then also raised the 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 amount of signage you can have. And then we also looked at the 198 19th Avenue interchange area, because if you think about it, you have, if you're going eastbound, you have to get off or you have to know that you're getting off on 19th really early. And so we figured for those signs to be seen that far in advance, we needed to put an extra allowance on those. Um, and so we did that. Um, the first sign that'll probably be going in on this new ordinance would be Maverick and what they're proposing would be consistent, would be consistent with this new ordinance. So, mm -hmm. um, so I can go into the details of, of the specifics if you'd like, but, um, it's in there in the code. Um, one of the things we did require in terms of a design requirement is we said that the, instead of just having a pole, there needs to be some type of base uh, that's that's around a pole. So maybe mm -hmm. something about 12 feet high that gives the 
gives the look that there's a that there's a there's a heft, there's a base, there's something supporting the sign. Um, it's just an architectural detail that that helps you know give this give the sign a better look. Um, but other than that, we're pretty open on what people can do as long as they're meeting the the size requirements. So that would be a big change because before you it would be really it was going to be really difficult to meet the current ordinance. And so again, trying to be business friendly, trying to promote businesses in Lemoore for people that are driving through. Um, we thought this was a, a good way to do that. Uh, there's also a there's a separation requirement for signs from other signs. And there's also a separation requirement from residential areas. The last thing on the list is kind of a cleanup that we noticed. Uh, we've made a number of changes to density and minimum lot size last fall, you'll recall. And so, oh, I missed that one. Um, that was not the last one, second to last one. So landscape standards and city engineering standards. Um, we had a discussion with the with the city council about what's going on at in the front of homes on local streets. This is local streets only in front of homes. Um, should the sidewalk be adjacent to the curb? Should it be set back with a parkway? What about a street tree? Um, right now, we let the developer pick what they want to do. Um, I think we decided that we're going to we're going to keep that as is, but the council did say they would like the sidewalks to be uh, wider. So um, that's not really part of the zoning ordinance, but we're we're letting you know in case you want to uh, weigh in on that informally, and we can pass that on to the council um, that we're going to recommend widening that to six feet. So. Um, so that would be in, in front of mo most of the major streets, larger collectors and arterials are already six feet, but now this would apply to the new local streets as well. And then um, if they do put a, put a, the sidewalk adjacent to the curb, they're still required to put in a street tree. It would just be behind the sidewalk. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Now the last one. Um, as I was saying, we um, made some changes last year to density and minimum lot size, and we noticed a few things that that should have been changed with that, that were in a, the introductory section of the code. And so we're just going and making that. So this is more of a cleanup uh, code change. So our recommendation is that you'd recommend these changes to the council. Um, we are open for any discussion. We can answer any questions. Uh, as I said, the, the sidewalk is not part of your formal recommendation, but if you have a comment that you want us to pass along about that, we'll be discussing that at the council. Okay. Let's go ahead and bring it to public and then yeah. we can bring you back up. Okay. Like We'd like to open up uh, number six to public comment at excuse me um at 6 p.m if there's any public comment at this time mayor no <laughs> <laughs> christy any emails anything like that no okay we'll go ahead and just close i hate to say the same time 601 i want to say we gave it a minute at least <laughs> okay great okay time for commissioners with questions or concerns Can I start it off back to with what we were starting before? Yeah. So the driveways without aprons. So did it, was it ever brought up? And this is not a quiz, like a right or wrong answer. Was it ever brought up about, uh, I just noticed when I was working code enforcement and as a building inspector, we see damage to the sidewalks mm -hmm. with the tires and stuff hitting on those secondary driveways. Is that, Definitely. Is that it, something? It was discussed in the city council hearing. Um, I'm sorry, in the city council workshop mm -hmm. and they were in favor of allowing a second drive approach for those reasons. 
I, but think, not requiring it, I guess. Right. I think the issue is just that it wasn't specifically addressed in the zoning code. Um, mm-hmm. because again, it's, it's an engineering permit Yeah, and I think it just kind of slipped through the cracks for us. So if we can find it. Yeah, I probably will be, but yeah, it doesn't mean that these guys have to vote for it either. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's just, um, it seems that uh, you're driving over a sidewalk basically right. when you do that right. um, in the long term. I mean, in short term, you see tire marks and tracks on the, on the, when they hit and skid and everything, but mm-hmm. over a couple of years, it does start to wear out and stuff. So whose job would it be to enforce the parking on the driveway, the secondary driveway? Let's say it's a food truck. I was reading the text and it's not licensed not sorry, not licensed. The tags are not up to date. Is that code enforcement? Generally, it is code enforcement. Okay. If they do happen to have a home occupation yeah. for that business at that location, then planning could get involved. Christy? No. It's not. We can hear you, I think. We're actually working on the internal policies that are already in place. Um, you know, there are standards public works has for the width of a driveway, that sort of thing. And what we're, we're working on is a policy so that they have to come in and get a zone clearance before they do the flat work. Because, of course, like you understand, our building department doesn't want to have to inspect flat work. So it will be more or less a zone clearance process. So that we'll have something in the file saying, Okay, you can have this, but it needs a direct approach or they'll get encroachment, needs an encroachment permit, that sort of thing. What we're trying to do is people are doing it anyway. So we're trying to figure out a way to to at least alleviate the problem that we're having with people doing it anyway, park car leaves and gotcha. So, so I don't really know that a zone the zoning ordinance says that it you have to have building permit to see it. That's more of a policy. So yeah, so the two are really not connected necessarily. Because if you say they have to have a driveway and there's not enough room in between, then you're mm-hmm. okay. <laughs> There is another side of this that is outside the purview of the planning commission. So there is, I believe it, Christy or Steve, it was chapter four that talked about public nuisance and parking in the front yard. And so when we take this to count, if we do take this to council, there would be more amendments that would take place in other areas of the municipal code. And that could be one of them. So yeah. if we find where the driveways are specifically specifically addressed and then talk with the engineering department about, you know, there's good, probably going to be separation requirements, um, you know, how they feel about a second driveway. Yeah. And then there was also some discussion on permeability. So when you're you know, how much could be paved. So there might be a few more specifics, again, in other areas of the code that aren't in the zoning ordinance that could be addressed at that time. It's a, it's the same as the street cross section that you saw for the yeah. parkways. It's just something right. engineering standards. Any other? Oh, sorry. Right. Nothing can be parked there, so RVs or anything. It's getting smaller. It's really a neat point. Mm. <laughs> on the newer yeah, homes yeah she's right yeah yeah nobody's gonna get back there at <laughs> five feet huh <laughs> so you can't put this driveway in unless you have the ability to access the side or backyard okay so we're looking at existing homes that probably been around a while with the bigger lots and the bigger side yards okay and yeah. as i drive around the city i find several lots that have a drive approach with some wooden blocks or rubber blocks mm-hmm. on it, and it's tearing stuff up. Yeah. And this isn't for the new size of lots. I understand that is, is different, but for somebody to come in and just tear that up, because then you have to, then the homeowner is responsible for replacing curb and gutter and stuff like that, which is rather pricey. Uh, I think that ought to be addressed somehow. Right. And the public works department doesn't want anything in those gutters. Yeah. No. Yeah, no, they don't. Exactly. Okay. No, and to get do. an encroachment permit, you do have to have a licensed and bonded contractor working because you're working in the public right away. So, right. You can't just yeah. be a homeowner trying mm-hmm. it on themselves, mm-hmm. trying yeah. to do it themselves. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay, we could take this one at a time. Any other comments or anything on the driveways or off street parking? I'm just with you on the. Okay. I, I think the apron. We could probably we, make that recommendation. We, 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 I'd like to recommend that. Okay. We include that because yeah, that, that curb, good. that curb's just not made to hold that kind of weight. Yeah. So let's do this. Whenever we go to uh, uh, vote on this, we can make that recommendation with the whole thing. Is that correct? Right. Okay. Great. Okay. Let's move on to what's the next one? Is it fences? And, oh, we skipped fences and walls. I apologize. Any public? No. I'm not sorry. Not public commissioners. Anything on fences or anything? Okay. Great. Next one would be heritage trees. Is it trees? Yeah, right. trees. Mm -hmm. I think I remember last year, Steve, going over a bunch of the trees and yeah, stuff. We, we we did go over this not that long ago, yeah. I'm okay with everything the way it is. Yeah. We're keeping, we're continuing to protect six species? We would only protect the valley oak. Oh, we're just going to go to yeah. one? Mm -hmm. If has, can, has there Christy, been, can you go to page Has there been like requests to cut trees yeah. down that we have been protecting? Yeah, what the initiated? Tree specifically, I know of. Christy, do you have any specific requests for these, or are people doing this without getting a permit? We don't actually have people coming in to request permits taken down. We did that last year in the chain of these. We were constantly taking down the valley oak. Oh, I gotcha. Do we have the protection in place when they came in to put take down the valley oak? Oh, we did, so they couldn't do it. Yeah, well, we they. Arborists come out and toss if the tree been... oh, I see. Okay. So we... they're allowed to do, there's an exception to that if yeah, it's diseased or. Yeah. Okay. Or... Yeah. There's called oh, mitigation trees. We found that there's no reason for all these other trees. It's just no reason to come and get permission, just take them down. Okay. We, we do know that the city is proposing to remove all the palm trees from all city parks. Oh. Um, is, is, this helps with that. <laughs> They're fine if somebody gets caught cutting down a valley oak. I believe. I know it's a state law, oh. uh, but it is left up to local jurisdictions to enforce it. I I'm not sure. If do that do is we know? The is there a lot of valley oaks in people's yards in Lamore? I know of a few. Yeah. Yeah, I, oh, I, I know of a few also, but few means the few, like less than 10 probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I would guess that would be accurate, mm. but I don't know for sure. Um, Great. Yeah, I checked a number of heritage tree ordinances. The only other I found in, it was, the, I believe it was the city of, it's uh, Elk Grove, so right south of Sacramento. So in Elk Grove, they listed about three or four different kinds of oak trees. But outside of that, no other city protects anything beyond oaks. Oh, the uh, value. Specifically, okay. yeah. Okay. It does say that anything identified as a habitat uh, by a special status species or anything that was requ required to be planted as mitigation would have to remain. So those would also require a special permit to take down. Um, but outside of that, it would just be the oak tree. Okay. Valley oak tree, excuse me. Right. Anything else, commissioners? Mr. Clement, good. All right, let's move on to allowed uses and required entitlements for base zoning districts. So there's a use table, as we call it. Mm -hmm. And so these would these are the proposed changes to the use table is certain zones where tattoo parlors are not allowed and whether they require a CUP or not. And then um, we're starting with tattoos, right? Yes. And so in this case, all of them would be permitted from this point forward in specific zones. I believe there's five, okay. six. So part of this is the uh, storage facilities, correct? So in this zoning? In this use table, yes. So the okay. changes you see on line two are for the personal storage facilities. Has it been discussed about operating hours since they will be closer to residential zones or yes. actually in? 
let me pull those up. I guess nobody can go in at 10 o'clock at night and, you know, with a moving truck and. So there are a number of standards that would apply to all, all proposed mini storages or personal storages, storage facilities. But then there are there... several that apply only to those within residential oh, zones. Okay. Sorry and they can are restricting business hours to 7 a.m. to 9 p.m. Uh, during the week and then and Saturday and 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Sundays. Okay. Those numbers could be adjusted. Um, that would apply to all. Just residential. I see. It's just not under that list. Okay. And then the walls, what kind, number four, what kind of wall would... Is it a sound wall, basically? Like a brick wall? It what would, it would uh, serve two purposes, yeah. one for aesthetics and one for noise. Okay. So most storage facilities are completely enclosed by a, a CMU block or brick wall, those type of walls. But there are some that actually use their buildings as their exterior wall. Mm -hmm. And so that's why there are two different references in here. Um, again, I didn't want to you know, create anything um, that would be inconsistent with what was already in the code. So in regards to the walls, it references how um, the, the standards are called techniques to break up long building walls. Yeah. And those are in your existing code. So uh, that would address the wall itself. And then I'm sorry, a, a building wall and then a wall, sort of like a fence. Those standards exist as well. And... Um, so if they, I don't mean to interrupt, if no they worries. use the, the back of an, ex, of their building mm -hmm. as, so they don't have to have a wall if they use the back of their building or would a wall still be required? It would not be required. It would not be required. Yeah. Okay. But those walls would need to be articulated. Every 30 feet. Interesting. Yeah. It, okay. Well, those, okay. So those building designs, yes, it is every 30 feet. So okay. I just want to make sure. So even the back of the wall has to be somehow made aesthetic yeah you're not okay. looking at a roll-up door or um yeah you know, it'll just be the back of the storage mm -hmm. building yeah okay so those techniques to break up long building walls they're usually things like changes in surface so some sort of like a cornice or yeah. eave or something like that or shutters on a pretend window um, so the bob wire is prohibited is it only is it no matter what the zoning is, or is it only in this zoning that we're we're talking about now? Do you know? Like if they're out in the industrial area and they build something, can they have the barbed wire? I they can. They okay. Can. Yes. We just don't want children or something climbing and right. they hit the barbed wire in those areas. I mean, it won't. They won't industrial, but yeah. So D is for every facility, and then E forward is for those within residential zones or adjacent to residential zones. That's probably just consistent with your existing code. So if if barbed wire is allowed in res, in industrial zones, then we would continue to allow it. To, you know, okay, regardless of the specific business. Great, sorry, commissioners. I I talk a lot. I apologize. If you have anything they're, else, go ahead. They're good questions. Um, and we also wanted to note for the tattoo parlors mm -hmm. and their special standards, those are going to be permitted by right, but these personal storage facilities still require a CUP. So they okay. would still come before you. Mm -hmm. It, um, a lot of, in all areas of the code, cities and the state especially are moving towards objective standards. So it kind of takes the pressure off of you to require a, an applicant to do something that they feel like, oh, you're making me do that. So by having them in the code, nope, everyone has to do this. And it's just clear and concise and there's no questions. Mm -hmm. This is required. Okay. So back, if you brought up tattoo parlors. We talked about a separation, minimum separation. What would be that? What would, do we know what that is? They are, I can- I think it's 500 feet. Between- I think it's less between than that. Oh, less? Oh, did you already have that in there? Number three. You know what? If I would have read Number this three. before I showed up. Oh, it is 500. It is 500. 
Yeah. We went out on, we zoomed out on Google Maps, like an aerial and kind of looked at, you know, a couple blocks. How far is that? Um, so 500 seemed like a good separation. And then that doesn't apply within the downtown area because downtowns are meant to be, you know, clustered and yeah, um, business friendly. So the windows have to be 100% clear and free of obstructions. So open signs and stuff like that, not allowed? I think the lettering, we could reduce you that know, percentage. Something says, you know, open, closed, right. or anything like that. 100%. That is a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. We that could reduce that to maybe 80 it was originally, it was taken from another code and it was basically to address safety. So, yeah. you know, for, yeah. Yeah. Cause I know some businesses like, so is, is this downtown tattoo parlors? If they were downtown or anything like that, would it have to be a hundred percent? That actually, that specific requirement yeah. of, would apply to all tattoo parlors. Even in I know a office. lot of businesses downtown can have up to 25% of their windows, or I don't know what the, it is in Lemoore, but mm -hmm. so we're, so tattoo parlors would not be allowed to do that, correct? At this point, as it's written now, correct. Is is there a reason behind that requirement? Like you just said, safety. But... It was safety related, but I'm sure even if it was 80% clear, they could still yeah. see in well. So would that be something that uh, we can make a recommendation? Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. Yes. And then the 18 and under, no, is that a state law? Do you guys know? Oh, it is a state it law. Is. Okay. I didn't so know if it was Lamar or something. That's uh, going along with number eight. Okay. So gotcha. piercings can take place under 18 with the presence of an adult, but tattoos are not to take place in any circumstances mm -hmm. under the age of 18. Gotcha. Commissioner, is there anything else on tattoo parlors, the requirements? No. Storage facilities? Are you know, something that? I'll bring up. So I used to work for a city and we had two tattoo parlors come in. And unfortunately, when I went down to do inspections, um, the doors were locked and you had to knock and there was a camera that allowed you to come in. So not insinuating anything. Businesses normally have to be completely unlocked, I'm sure, by a fire code and stuff like that, right? Okay. So it's not like we need to put that language in here to gain entry or exit would require a mechanical device or anything like that, right? I'm sure the fire code or whatever would take care of that. Okay. Just want to make sure. Okay. Outside of this meeting, I will insinuate, but... <laughs> Why those doors were locked, but okay. Well, if yeah. the windows are clear, we could see in. <laughs> no, they weren't. They weren't clear at all. <laughs> I couldn't see anything. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's see. Um, tattoos, personal storage. Have we hit everything, commissioners? Oh, signs. Oh, the signs. The signs. Signs. Any questions, concerns about signs, signage? Was that going to be automatic or would they still need to do a CUP? For the signs? For the signs, yeah. If, if they wanted to make signs up to 12 feet out there, if there was a lot of businesses that wanted to start doing. Those are by right. It would be automatic. A monument sign would be by right. You do have a there, There's no foreseeing that becoming too like congested or clustered with a lot of signs out there? There would still be a sign permit uh, that okay. staff would review internally but as long as it met the size and height requirements i don't think there's any separation requirements for the monument signs right correct sorry um there there might be some separation requirements from sign to sign yeah yeah okay in the residential zones they're one per site um one per residence. 
And we're talking about individual businesses, right? Not like a cluster of businesses, not like a shopping center. So what would be the signage requirements? Let's say, for example, Kmart was open. We'd have a sign that says Kmart, say Mart, and uh, Baskin Rob is now and stuff like that. Is that addressed like on Hanford Armona? Can they have that zoning? What would be the maximum height requirement there? Would that be regional commercial? Neighborhood? It's neighborhood. One highly oriented sign does not apply. Okay. That only applies to the Okay. There's different codes that we're not proposing to change other than the height of the line size. Oh, I gotcha. And okay. That allow them to have, they can have a combined shopping center sign. Uh, they can have, like, the McDonald's can have a sign, Burger King can have a sign. If they combine them, would it be the maximum six foot, the new six foot then? Okay. I gotcha. So Burger King now, I think, is four feet. They could just say, hey, we're going to go with the six foot sign. Not a problem. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions or anything? All right. Well, with that, do we have, let's see, we're done with public hearing. Do we have uh, a motion to adopt? Oh, spacing. The amendments before us, resolutions before us. I, I guess I got a question. Have okay. have the tattoo parlor owners, have they looked at these proposed changes? I just want to make sure we're not picking on them at all, like with the, the tent, the, the, the clear glass, anything at all that they could just come back and say, hey, this isn't right. Okay. They haven't. No, we haven't. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, making it permitted by right is significantly easier to get your business going rather than requiring a CUP. There's no public hearing. There's no um, discretionary approval. The, the one thing I think Commissioner Franklin's saying though is right. there is a different standard on the tattoo parlors with the windows. So yeah. business, but I do agree that 25 petitions said Seventy five percent. Okay. Seventy five. So is that current right now? Seventy five percent. Okay. So we can make that recommendation in the motion. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Franklin, you. bringing that up. Okay. So do we have a motion? Okay, I'll make a motion to adopt the resolution twenty twenty four dash o three with. With the recommendations that we discussed, correct? Hold on, real quick. Okay. We're gonna make sure we okay. get the wording correctly. Yeah. Here. Right. That's for the off street parking. Yeah. If we do that recommendation, yeah. okay. So we'll get whatever recommendation is there. Okay. And then tattoo parlors. Free and clear up to 75%. Okay, gotcha. So what we'll have to do on your motion is go ahead and say all this right here and approve zoning tax amendments. And then you will state, let's see, design and development standards for our street parking. We'll talk about the aprons. You have to make that motion okay. with this one. And then the tattoo parlor is up to 75%. So, okay. Okay. Here we go. See if I can get this right. I know. <laughs> We'll need your guidance. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so I'll make a motion to accept the uh, resolution 2024-03 and approve the zoning text amendment 2024-01. With the condition, Brad. with the condition on uh, the design and development standards for the off-street parking areas, that we include that they have a um, driveway apron for the driveway. 
and then uh, for the uh, tattoo parlors that we allow. allow them to have at 75% on the window instead of 100% clear. Great. Thank you so much. <laughs> Do we have a second? I'll second that. Oh, look at that. Look at that. That's great. Okay. We have a first and a second. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she said as stated that sounds like legalese stuff right there okay i love it okay okay we have her first and a second i'd like to go ahead and take a vote commissioner clement aye commissioner franklin aye commissioner mead aye commissioner echagon aye and i'm commissioner couch and i vote aye as well it is passed thank you very much thank you. i appreciate you guys help Okay, we will move on to number seven, director's report. Anybody come up for that? <laughs> you might catch some things too. Um, yeah, Steve Rant, um, we, we've been reviewing a site plan for a senior housing building that's, I think I mentioned, maybe I mentioned this last time. Um, it would be out at... Uh, where Oleander is proposed to be expanded and or extended to D Street. So if you looked at the site today, you would say, how are we going to get access to that site? But once the street is in, it'll be just perfect. And so we think it's a good site for it. Um, there's a few changes the Public Works is going to ask them to make, but but it met all the planning requirements. It met the density and be nice to be a single building for senior housing kind of look like a hotel really um two and three bedroom or no one and two bedrooms um we would also i wanted to thank kira um she's been helping me out she did most of the research for the text amendments so i wanted her to be a part of the presentation and um uh you might see more of her we'll see um uh, anything else christy that you can think of we have a sign permit in from from Maverick for a it's a pretty tall sign, um, and uh, so we'll see what these text amendments actually really get you. But we looked at some other signs and we looked at um, some some yeah some other signs that would be about the same size that are already out there. One there's one in Tulare at a at one of the uh, truck stops. And so we're like, yeah, that that can work. So Is this on one ninety eight and nineteen. Yes. Okay. Yep. Anything to pull the traffic off of one ninety eight would be great. I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Jobs and never mind. I was going to say hopefully something happens in November, but <laughs> passing over. Okay, we're good. And so it's probably not, not of our purview. But what's happening with the old Vinnie Doyle's old cotton mill or? Looks like there's a lot of work going on over they're there. They're doing some. They're doing some remodeling, right? It's remodeling. Oh, right. You know about that? No, right? Yeah, somebody bought it. Yeah. Um. So the I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Via Garinzi. They're yes, they're okay. coming, and they're it's not it's um they're actually going to have a um, butcher shop market um in the uh, Gateway Plaza. So are you familiar with uh? So where Grocery Outlet is, you'll have north of that will be Dee Dee's. Um, they're actually um, have their their tenant improvement um, um, project is is almost complete. There were some issues with the roof and all on the building, so that took a little longer than we expected. But um, then the the butcher market will go um, in there where Beto's used to be. So uh, by the Renta Cent between Dee Dee's and the Renta Center, and then they're going to open um, a restaurant and. The word on the street is they're going to try to do steak, seafood, but I'm I'm not 100% sure on that. So um, let's hope. But so we're kind of excited about that. Um, they're doing a lot of work to the building. Um, 19th and Bush, um, the they we went through the the fuel station and the car wash, those are still um, underway. They had the parcel map that they had to do that that came to you last year. Um, they're now in the building permit process. And um, so I think the car wash is a little further ahead than the fuel station, but 
they're um, working diligently to get those completed. And then they've submitted a site plan for the other side of um, Davida on Bush and Acacia. Mm -hmm. And um, we've already um, approved a site plan for one drive through restaurant and um, they've submitted a parcel map for the rest of it to divide it into um, five parcels. So um, he's gonna do um, build the suit, um, long-term lease or purchase, um, we're not sure. So that will be coming to you eventually for the parcel map. Um, I wanted to, to give you an update on the affordable housing project that we approved last year as well um, on Smith and D Street. Um, that's moving along. We're finalizing their lot line adjustment um, and they looks like they've received all their funding. Um, this project really benefits the city because we're getting, um, I think over $2 million um, well, over $4 million between two different grants. Um, one grant will um, put in final, um, complete the sidewalks and, um, and, and widening of the street on D Street, East D Street. And then we'll be able to extend Oleander Avenue out to D Street and um, all the way to Fox and Hanford Armona Road and downtown. Um, we're going to do be able to do a lot of sidewalk repair. So really excited about that. Um, project. Um, and then with that, um, 2 million of it will also be able to, um, the city will be able to complete the Daphne storm drain, storm drain, ba storm drain basin, basin drain um, project that, so it will, the behind on north of D street, there's two ponding basins, one behind the fleet and then one out by the Woodside homes project, I believe. And so we'll be able to run, um, run the lines out to Lamore Canal um, for those. Mm -hmm. So that's really going to benefit the city. So hopefully between that and then the senior project that's going to be on the other side of Oleander, that area might start looking a little better than it does. Um, and we can get some more commercial businesses come to that. Oh, and um, the city um, is uh, the city manager, I believe he already signed it. Um, uh, we um, went, signed an agreement to have a hotel study done. So um, that's, I would say like the whole process is 60 days tops. Um, so probably um, August, we can come back to you with some information on that. So um, we're hoping that with the hotel study that we'll be able to bring some hotels to the city because that seems to be the thing that they want to know when they're interested in Lamore, but they want to know if we've done a hotel city a hotel study in it. And it's not that expensive. So we decided to go ahead and, and just do it. So can't think of anything else at the moment. Any discussion of the community facilities district? Um, I believe that that's still moving forward. Okay. I believe it went to council once. Okay. So, yeah. Great. Thank you. All right. Director's report. Okay. Number eight, commission reports, requests, commissioners. I think we just asked. I know, huh? <laughs> Great. I, know, I, know. I did. I just want to thank staff for everything they did. That looked like a little bit of work there. Yeah. And I'd like to say, I say this every time. Thank you, everybody. You guys work so hard just to bring it to us so we can pick it apart. And I mean, you guys do a great job and I appreciate it. I look forward to these meetings every month. I get to see my friends on the council and just hear everything that's going on in the city. And it's wonderful. Um, and just want to say, it's just, a, this is a wonderful city to live in. I know I haven't been here as long as everybody else, but it's, it's great. So anyways, with that, I'd like to adjourn the meeting, adjourn, adjourn the meeting sure. at 6.35 p.m. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.